Hello everybody and welcome to this iOS development tutorial. In this video we're going to be working with something called UI Action Sheets. So if you're wondering what, that, what a UI Action Sheet is, well let's take a look at an example app. So here's essentially what we're going to be building in this particular tutorial. I've got a simple little application that has two UI text fields, there's number one number two. And when I tap into these fields, I'm allowed to um, essentially enter uh, an integer value. I can jump in here and enter another integer value. And then I can hit the Go button, and this presents me with a UI action sheet. So the action sheet is essentially used to present a user with a set of alternatives uh, in terms of how they want to proceed with a given task. Uh, so you can do action sheets for a bunch of different stuff. Uh, typically you may use an action sheet if you want the user to confirm a potentially dangerous action so maybe they're deleting something. Um, as you'll see here the UI action sheet uh, oftentimes will have a text um, title. It'll also have a bunch of different buttons and we can of course add or remove these buttons as we so desire. And um, there's usually uh, a cancel button so we can just dismiss the action sheet. Uh, and in this particular app, you'll see that we're creating a UI action sheet with three options. So that's what our app does. It gives the user the option to either add the two numbers that they've entered, subtract them, or just clear the input field. So if I hit add, you see what happens here is a simple little label appears and it says, here's the sum of these two numbers. If I hit go again, I can hit subtract. That changes to the difference. And if I hit go again, I can this time do clear. And that should clear the uh, particular uh, UI text fields. Now I probably should have also cleared these values but that's okay. Um, we can do that within the tutorial if we so desire. Um, I can also tap away uh, into the space here and you'll notice that the keyboard disappears. Right, so this is essentially what we're going to build. We're going to build this UI action sheet. Now when you're building UI action sheets, you should also know that you can technically present them from anywhere. You can present them from a toolbar, from a tab bar, uh, it can be from a you know button bar, uh, it can also be from a view, which is what we're doing in this particular example. And um, they, the way they're presented varies just a little bit uh, depending on whether you're building for uh, the iPhone or the iPad. In this particular example, we're going to be working with the iPhone and we'll see how we can build these UI action sheets. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to jump back into Xcode here and I wanted to show you real quick the version of Xcode that I'm currently running which is version 4.5.1. Um, there may be a slightly newer version available but I don't think it's public yet. It might be just sort of in beta. So version 4.5.1 or later should work just fine if you are following along. All right, so let's get started. Um, so I've already gone to Xcode and gone File, New Project, and I've got under iOS Applications, I'm going to be selecting the Single View application. That's just a nice basic template. And I'm going to, on my desktop, create a project, and we'll just call it UI Action Sheet YT. And notice that I've got the device set to iPhone. I've also got Use Automatic Reference Counting checked. I'm going to now hit Next and that will create my application here. I'm just going to create it on the desktop. Hit create and give Xcode whoop, a couple seconds to create our project and then of course index the files that are within that project and we'll see it's doing that here. Give it a couple seconds to finish that up and it looks like it is just about done here. Okay. Right, so if we expand this project, you'll notice that it's got a pretty simple set of files, uh, app delegate, a header and implementation file, the view controller files, uh, including the nib file. So our first step, of course, is to jump within the nib file and set up our interface. So if you remember from our sample application, what we had was essentially you two text fields. So let's drag those onto our screen here. So I'm going to select that and drag another one. So we put up our two values. It may also be useful for us to tell our user um, what these values are. So let's drag a UI label as well. And I'm just going to set this to something as simple as num1. And we'll set the second label to num2. 
and in fact here's a quick little tip so I'm gonna select this and delete it if you've ever got the exact same thing um, so say I've got here I've essentially got two text fields and now I want to create two labels one option is I can select this press the option key on my keyboard and then just drag and you notice what it's doing is, is actually just making a copy so sometimes this just speeds things up in terms of your workflow um, so you can do that or if you prefer just do it the traditional way and drag and drop one on screen okay so we've got num1 and num2 set up no problem there um, what we want to do let's just as a matter of practice here is if I select this UI text field and I go over to the assistant uh, I'm not sorry not the assistant editor but the attributes inspector um, and if you don't see that it's probably because your particular view is hidden so the utilities view is where we want to be if I turn that on you see that this column appears and then if I select this particular text field if I come down here you'll notice that there's a section here uh, with the value for keyboard it's currently set to default but perhaps I want to set that to be a number pad because I only want the user to enter numbers so I can easily set that value and now when the user taps into that particular input field the keyboard uh, that they're shown is the numeric keyboard so we say number pad for both of those command s to save now we should also just um, for good practice go ahead and create a IB outlet to these particular text fields and I like doing them as I'm building them so what we do is we open up the assistant editor and then sort of right click and drag a connection here into our header file we'll just call this one num1 and it is going to be an outlet so these values are correct second one will be num2 so let's drag a connection here we we'll call this num2 and we'll hit connect as well and let's go back to our standard editor command s to save and we are good to go there alright so uh, from here what we want to do next is remember what we're going to do is add these two values and then display the result up top so of course to add them we need to create some kind of a method so what we'll do here is we'll drag a round rect button onto our view and I'm going to change this buttons text to just say go and then with that done what I'm going to do is jump back to this um, assistant editor and I'm going to drag a connection here and this time I'm going to create an action and then I'm just going to as part of this action uh, give it let's say let's call this IB action um, what do we want to do uh, we'll call it show uh, what do we want to say here show UI uh, blah 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 action sheet very good hit connect and that creates our IB action right there give it some space command s to save jump back to our standard editor now we now need um, really what I'm gonna do is create two UI labels so what I will do here is I will create a UI label here Let's maybe pull it over to this side just a little bit and give it some room and I'm going to go ahead and drag another UI label and put it right over here and maybe give it some room as well so what we're going to do here of course is create two UI labels and I'm going to clear this text that's already in them and the reason we want these two UI labels is because I want to display sort of a different message um, depending on what the user has selected within the action sheet and so for example if they're this if they've opted to add the two numbers together I can say something like sum is and then display the value and similarly if I if the user elects to um, get the difference between the two numbers then I can say differences or diff is and then put that value here so that's really what we're going to use these labels for so again we open up our assistant editor and we will create properties Whoop. Let's drag a connection here and we're going to call this one message so UI label and we're going to create another one here and we'll call this one result also an IB outlet connect and we should be all set very good alright so let's jump back here command s to save now let's jump back into our view controllers header file and you'll notice that of course there's all these properties that are created I want to point out a little bug that I seem to be experiencing with this new version of Xcode and that bug essentially deals with how you create uh, these properties so if you remember we were in our view controllers uh, nip file and we drew, 
basically dragged a connection or to this particular header file. Now, the problem there is that it's supposed to create a property and add synthesize statement as well. In my version of Xcode, ever since I've done this upgrade to 4.5.1, I've noticed that it's not creating the synthesize statements anymore, uh, which is a problem because if we want to be able to use the setter and getter methods, we need to be able to use that. So just FYI, if you uh, run into that issue, you know, it's a pretty simple fix. You just need to come back to your implementation file and do the at synthesize. If I can type here, uh, at synthesize and we just need to synthesize all the different uh, properties we've created. So num1, num2, message, and result. So we can just do that all on one line, really. So we say num1, num2, message, and result. Command us to save, and now we actually have our setters and getters, and we can definitely use them within our implementation file here. Okay, one more thing we have to do in the uh, view controller's header file is because we're creating action sheets, we have to be able to do something when, or we have to be able to react when the user taps one of the buttons in uh, our action sheet. And the only way to react to it within this particular view controller is to have this particular class conform to something called the UI action sheet delegate protocol. So the way we do that is we come into our header file and we say UI action sheet delegate. And by saying this, we essentially conform to this particular protocol. Now, there is a method that we're going to be targeting uh, uh, as part of this UI action sheet delegate. And let's take a look at what that is. So I'm going to put my cursor over here. And then within this um, utilities view on, this, on the right hand side, I should now get a quick help um, option here. You could also, in theory, just come down here, click the action option button, wait till it um, uh, turns into a um, question mark, and then if you click it, you should see the reference here as well. So either way, if I click on this, it opens up the organizer, and if I scroll down, you'll notice that there is a section here called responding to actions. And if I click on this particular method, here is the method signature. Let me just highlight it. Do a command C. And this is that method that we want to implement um, as part of the UI action sheet delegate. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this in and give myself some space. And now we see this full method signature. So you'll see that it's passing a couple parameters. It's passing an action sheet. And it's also passing the NS integer value, which tells us which of the buttons uh, the user tapped within the actual action sheet. OK. So we can leverage this information to do certain different things within our application. So let's go ahead and do just that. Um, our first step, of course, will be to display the action sheet itself. So the way we do that is we have to create an action sheet and then display it. So let's, let's go ahead and do uh, that particular process. So first step is create the UI action sheet and display it. So we do that as UI action sheet and let's just call it my options. Seems like a good enough name. And we will do it as a UI action sheet alloc and then we can go through and say init with this last method is what we want. We say we want to say init with title and you see it takes a bunch of different parameters and we can set that to really anything we want. So you'll see the first parameter takes an NS string. So we'll just call, we'll create an NS string object and call it math options. I think is what I had used. All right. Okay. Next, it's asking us who is the delegate of this particular action sheet. And if you remember, we defined our view controller.h class as being the um, or, or rather our view controller class as being uh, as as uh, let me rephrase this we defined our view controller class and said that it would conform to the UI action sheet delegate protocol so in theory all we have to do is set this to self which just means I'm setting it to myself all right cancel button title so what do we want to call the cancel button title well an NS string called cancel seems like it would work just fine so let's do that the destructive button title uh, I'm going to set to nil. Whoop. Should have tabbed over correctly, so that's going to set be set to nil. 
that's fine. And then the other button titles, we're going to essentially just set a couple different ones. So remember, we want to give the user three options. We're going to say add, we're going to say subtract, and we're going to say clear, which would essentially clear the text fields. right? And then it's always end, going to end with a nil there. Command S to save. And now we have created our UI action sheet. Now let's do our next step, which is let's actually display the action sheet. So we do that by saying my options. And there is a method called show in view. And we can just say self, which is of course referring to our class, and say show it in its view and semicolon to finish that statement and here we go we now have our code in place to create the action sheet and then actually display it within our view controller so I'm going to go ahead and split this particular tutorial into two pieces so this is our first part we've now created our action sheet and are able to display it as in the second part of this tutorial we're actually going to look at some of the other options where we show the UI action sheet and um, we also um, determine what we should do once the user has uh, you know, displayed the button and things like that. So, all right, very good.